Frank, um, it's been welcoming, but I'm sure it's a big relief to get the win. I, I guess even more important after the Arsenal performance to show a bit of reaction. It did look a bit nervous at times, but the important thing was that they did deliver for you, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. I think um, the Arsenal first half wasn't good enough. I've said that. It's no point in harping on about that. The second half reaction was better. So in the days between games, we can't work much, but we can talk and have meetings and talk to players individually. And um, today was a nice small step forward. I think we controlled a lot of the game. Bournemouth will always give you some problems here. With, they're a good team with the you know, top end of the pitch, um, playing through quickly, got a lot of energy in their team, set pieces, they're dangerous. So you never feel safe at one all. But I think we controlled it a lot. Um, and maybe a little bit of a sign of us controlling the first half without the killer instinct. Like we're, we're running inside their box a lot in the first half. We had a lot of overloads on the side of the pitch. And as this team developed, or as we add to the squad, I think you have to be more killers at the top end of the pitch. If you look at the top half of the table, that's what you'll see all across it. At the moment, we haven't got that, but you saw nice individual performances today in a positive direction. I'm just asking about your changes and you. Sterling, CH, it seemed like in the Chelsea end they both got booed, but they both delivered really important assists today, just on the atmosphere from the fans there. I don't know if they've got a right to say what they want, obviously, but and, and for what they actually delivered on the pitch. Well, our fans were fantastic today, so I personally appreciate their support. Um, I appreciate we had a moment on the end of the pitch where everyone feels good for a day. I think that's important to build a connection between players and fans. Um, and in terms of the subs themselves, I think all the subs that we made made impact. Um, in terms of Ruben and Raheem coming on that bit earlier, I think Ruben gave us a bit of physical presence and calmness on the ball. And Raheem, you know, as you say, was involved in, in the goals. Aspie comes on and gives us leadership, and Hakim came on and was an assist and played really well. So I, I think you know, um, opinion can always change in a period. But they're two players. That, 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 if you talk about Hakim and uh, Raheem that want to do well, they want to do well as football players and they've got big talent, both of them. So, you know, sometimes if it's form and there's been a lot of form that's maybe under performance at times this year, it's very much temporary and I think their class is permanent and I'm pleased for them for having some impact today when they come on. Hello. Hello we've, we've spoken a lot in recent weeks, probably too much, about the kind of the, the flat atmosphere in the dressing room after games. So if you can give us an indication about the, on a personal level, your sense of relief and their sense of relief, and you know, you just said they're enjoying it for a day. Whether you actually should, rather than keep a lid on it, whether you think you should actually let them really, really enjoy this one because it's been a long time. Yeah, they should enjoy it, and we're happy. It, it, there's no doubt because when you don't have that feeling for a while, it gradually knocks you down. And I, I walked into that. It was very evident in the dressing room from coming in that there was a lot of picking up that needed to be done. And unfortunately, you need results to come in, in line with that for it to, to, to keep you stepping forward. So that, that's been tough. And I think, you know, the lads are all uh, human. Uh, we're all affected in similar ways uh, when you're not winning games or you don't feel like you're at your best. And the only way to get through that, I say it a lot, is to fight and to work through it. And, you know, in this period, um, it will be a challenge of the players that will make them stronger or better as they go on. I've been in relative periods where they're tough. Um, so absolutely they should enjoy tonight and have a beer or have a glass of wine or do whatever they do. And, but, but we cannot take our foot off the pedal in, touch, in terms of trying to take steps forward into the end of this season because it's important. And today you saw individual performance in Padishil, you saw individual in Conor Gallagher and Noni Madoiki and other players in the team that are big steps forward because they're individuals that will be part of this club moving forward probably. So that, that was a, that's a good sign. Did note that before the, the two late goals, Todd Bowley was coming in for a bit of stick as well. But it kind of gives you a sense of the frustration they're feeling in that away end. I mean, there were some quite choice words being aimed at the chairman, and I guess feelings are running high in every aspect of the, every area of the club. Yeah, because this is Chelsea Football Club. All eyes will be on. The fans have been used to a lot of success. They want a lot of success. I'm not going to comment on any of the stuff you're talking about, but. Um, what I do know is that the fans will stick with this club and they're a fantastic group of fans. I do know that there's a lot of intentions to take this club where we want to get it to again and there's not one club out there of our size or anywhere near our size that hasn't had transitional periods. People would give a, give a left arm to have the success we've had for 20 years. So if it's our year where we have to go again and work a bit and try and come back stronger next year, everyone stick together and I'm sure we will. Will you have a beer? Sorry. Will you have a beer? Tonight, will you let yourself have a beer? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. I'm holding him on the coach now. <laughs> not, not too many. No. Over there. Yeah.
Frank, um, ben Chilwell himself. Uh, hamstring. Yeah. Uh, we don't know. We don't know. But it's, you know, uh, with a hamstring at this stage of the season, it could clearly be a worry for the last few games. Uh, also, as well, you signed um, Thiago Silva at UVM previously. Mm -hmm. Again, with his age and that, it's something still up in the past. Yeah. I, I think Thiago is a credit in all, in all aspects. He's a classy, brilliant player. His career says it. He's also brilliant at looking after himself to play at this level. I mean, 38 or so, I was I was in the MLS at that point. I understand that, especially as a centre back to play in the Premier League, what he must be doing with his body. I know that, and he also has got a great mind and he's got a winning mentality. So he would have been suffering a bit recently because he feels it and he wears it, and um, he's he's a great reference point for the young centre backs that we've got in the team around him. So um, yeah, nothing but praise for, for Thiago in all aspects. Okay, we'll finish here, Neil. Um, normal. Uh, can you just confirm if uh, they were fit, the ones who weren't in the squad? Um, Aubameyang, Bettinelli, Zakaria, uh, Fafana, David Fafana, we know Wesley wasn't, and Chuck Wiminka. Yeah. Why do you always ask that question? Because nobody ever knows who's selected and who yeah. is unfit unless. Right. Yeah, yeah, no, fair enough, but I don't, you know. I've... Pulisic against Arsenal. Um, he wasn't in the squad. Yeah. He was fit. Yeah, unfortunately, I have to leave yeah, players at home for the size of the squad, so it's a, that is a tough part of the job, to be fair. And, and now, I mean, on today's evidence, Chalabar at right back, Badia Shield at centre back, Maduka, Mudrick, Conor Gallagher, all 23 or young, younger, all giving performances that were highly respectable. Um, should they now. If they keep working right and training, be in the team until the end of the season in order to form relationships, combinations. Um, pro probably not easy to, to answer that. I think to a degree, yeah. But it's, I have to think about Forest, see what the week says. But yeah, of course, I think my, my role now is to try and give those players minutes and to show and to, to grow a little bit in the team, like you say. Um, but also, like as much as there's that, I also have to have all the players and all have to respect what I'm trying to do. So if they're training well, there are other players that will be pushing those players too. So they do have to have a level of performance. But I agree with you what you said. If they, you know, like Nonny, Nonny's performance on Tuesday gets him in the team today, even though he was not so well a couple of days ago. Um, you know, I think we all saw Benoit today and I think it's pretty clear that he's got a big talent. So for me, yeah, those decision, decisions I'll have to make. But they do have to keep their level and they do have to keep pushing. And we've got a tough run in. We know that. The last game, last week, has got three games against three of the top three, two of them away from home. So we'll probably need to use the squad a little bit in that period anyway.